Good tidings, all you gorgeous individuals. Welcome inside to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. And again, we've got another day to take some deep breaths before the World Championship resumes, which means we get to do a little World's Edition of Who Am I? I'm going to read some wacky stats all from World so far. And Mark's going to try and guess what player or team they are, which is, by the way, an impossible task. Usually pretty bad at this one. Pretty hard to nail down some of these players all around the world, all the champions that are going on through. Hoping, hoping, a little smaller pond to work with this time with the world's pool. Maybe, maybe nail a couple of these on the dark board. And again, we're condensed to one single tournament. We're not pulling from all these other regions. So maybe that'll make it a little easier. But uh, we'll see as we dive into the first one. Who am I? I am an AD carry. So big hint right away the only ad carry that is top three amongst all other ad carries at the tournament in damage percentage kills per game and kill participation the only guy who's top three in all those categories who am i oh man uh, you, you got to think about this one because you know we've had a couple of good performances throughout the a Swiss stage that we've seen from these yep. ADCs. Not necessarily anyone going nuts so what so, no one going crazy with it type of thing in the bottom lane that we have seen in previous years. I'm, I'm going to throw my hat in the ring on this one on a Hanwha Life Viper for this type of situation. I think he's been a guy that's, you know, contributed a little bit, picked up some kills, not necessarily been the main force, but strong enough, I think, throughout this Swiss stage, I'll take a chance on it. LCK guys, always a good bet for uh, these. But this is the hometown hero, the rookie. It's your boy Masu popping off no. so far at Worlds. No way would I have thought that Masu would be in those type of numbers. I think that one of the things, again, that you look for with that, that, you know, it was, it. I'll say it at least, it crossed my mind before I immediately said LCS. No way that's going to be there. <laughs> This is one of the teams, FlyQuest, that has said that one of the ways we want to play, invest in that bottom lane. You know, we've seen that throughout this in, in this tournament. They've said, we'll bring up the tanks. We'll bring out the peel. We'll care. We'll, you know, we'll be there for you. But you got to be there with the damage. And Masu has been there looking at those stats. And again, compare the MSI performance out of this Fly bot lane to what we're getting at Worlds. It's night and day. Obviously going to be tested against the guy you mentioned in Viper uh, as the real bot lane matchup test going forward for them. So we'll see how they hold up there. But so far, things have been going pretty damn well for Masu in that bot lane. Uh, then we get to another fellow. I, I guess I'll say, you know, I won't give the main hit yet. First, I'm just going to say, among all players, every single role at the event, this guy has the highest CS differential at 15 minutes. He also is tied for first in terms of first blood victim percentage. That means he's the guy dying when he's getting first blooded. And he also has the lowest kills per game among his role and i'll say the role is top lane oh that's a that's a whole uh, he's all over the place that's a lot of spaghetti <laughs> to work through and kind of figure out you know okay this guy's doing well this is all this is hmm top lane interesting all that cs that's going through you you you, you start talking cs immediately my mind is starting to go through the trophies the knights the fate uh, yeah. now not, the, the cs numbers lane. remember can be a bit skewed because it's lane swap city for these Ooh. top laners right Ooh, oh, that's okay that's changing things up a little bit here feeling more in the dark about this one <laughs> at this point I'll, I'll go with zeus for this one i think that he's been you know pretty solid throughout these ones he's obviously had a couple lane swaps going through with T1 type of situation. I'll, I'll, I'll throw it on Zayus. I wish I could have found damage taken numbers because that would have given this one away. This is probably mostly the CS numbers are from a Scion game. This is Bwipo in the top lane. Rocking a 1.0 kills per game. Maybe that's because Masu's uh, stealing the ball. But I feel like the CS numbers are from that Scion game mostly. Okay, now this, this is the one where it's the little asterisk on doing this at world's time, where it is maybe a little bit more difficult 
because you can have these one-off type performances that can absolutely skew. Small sample size stuff. Yeah, yeah. Was not, I totally <laughs> blanked on the Scion performance coming through. That makes a little bit more sense to see these numbers I into that type of territory, especially those uh, CS numbers. I can see that one coming through with the Scion situation. Whippo made it work. Made a, made yeah. one of these interesting, unique champions. You know, again, we know about him that he's willing to do this and then wants to use that as one of the angles for FlyQuest. Exactly there, the Scion performance. Back-to-back -back FlyQuest boys we're talking about. That's it for FlyQuest. Don't worry, this isn't just for FlyQuest players, but uh, <laughs> we'll get to this fella is a jungler, and he is sitting as, first and foremost, one of four junglers to not be involved in a single first blood yet, but that's, that's where the bad ends for this guy, because he is first among junglers in KDA, gold per minute, and XP differential at 15 minutes. Who am I? Man, who's who's really been you know motoring on through in the jungle? Mm. It's not inspired. I'll tell you that. <laughs> no, I, I'm I'm not thinking about inspired for this one. But Ivern is not really gonna let you nah. <laughs> that type of situation in a couple of them. Hmm. Hmm. You know, I'm I'm feeling there's definitely an LPL LEC angle here. I feel like one of these junglers is is gotta be it. Uh, Let's go with let's go with yike i think he's been around you know he's he's got some pretty good numbers he's been pushing the pace pretty decent for g2 so far this event getting involved you know what yike is second in a lot of these categories and in the top of a lot of un other jungler categories so yike is right there with that gets but this is the international level up it's owner who's been dominating for t1 despite not getting involved in a first blood and that's Oh, crazy to see yeah. that it is owner because the first blood that throws me off because you're always expecting he's involved good or bad in one of these situations usually trying to get something started for t1 crazy that's pretty good and that is a good indication for t1 again we talked about this one if you have owner contributing at this type of way playmaking being a key catalyst for this team getting going that is t1 near the strongest and yeah, that's why, even though Yikes at the top of those categories, that's why this Yike owner head to head is going to be an absolute banger when G2 and T1 throw down the next round of action. Last one. This is a team, not a player. Still at Worlds, of course. This squad rocking the lowest team kill death ratio at sub. 0.5, which is uh, really bad, folks. They have the lowest dragon percentage at 9% single digits. One of two teams to not get a single Baron at the World Championship so far. But they're tied with Gen G for first place when it comes to locking up that first turret. I don't know how they've managed to do that with all the other numbers, but... Oh my god, what a what a Rubik's Cube to solve through on this one, trying to think of the teams and, and how we've had them. Oh man. No Barons. Zero. Who, who's on the zero for that one? You know, immediately I'm, I'm starting to think, oh man, you know, kind of... You know, this has got to be a team that is still pretty good, but obviously has run into some tough squads to not have any of these, you know, type of things. Thinking, oh man, is that, you know, is it BLG? But then, of course, you go, well, there's the Mad Lions Koi game. So they must have been able to get something there at that point. Can't be BLG. Got to be someone else. I'll go for LNG on this one. I feel like this one can't be them. This, I'm missing it. But the Baron is really throwing me off on this one, trying to think back to all these games and who hasn't gotten a single one. I wanted to give the big hint that they are no longer at the tournament. This, uh, you okay. mentioned them, but it was the BLG side. It is Mad Lions Koi. Not a single Baron, 9% Dragon, sub 0.5 team KDA. Uh, somehow they were getting first turrets, but mostly a disaster class for mdk i gotta issue that public apology to lng for saying it to you guys painting you with that one but if it is mad lions koi that's that is an interesting examination to go through that and you know, dissect i guess at this point because they're, they're out of the world situation oh, to look at it yeah and say what went wrong what you know were the things to take away and learn and try and all these things 
weekend. We blasted El Yoya, of course, yesterday in, in these situations. But looking at those numbers again, paints a picture of you're there, you're going toe to toe with some of these matches. You're, you know, hanging in there enough, but then it's not coming through at the end of the day. It's not getting across that finish line, of course. And a big part of that are those numbers that, that, that laid out a pretty tough path to find yourself in, uh, some wins when that's happening. And again, the toughest part, okay, you had BLG, that's fair, that's a tough loss to have rough numbers, but then you're going PSG and GAM that is the result of some of these losses. These aren't even the world beaters at the world championship and you're putting up these numbers. They're tier two regions. Yeah, there, there has to be an expectation, even on a team like the Mad Lions, where we have seen this roller coaster go through the years, you know, the different splits of the LEC, and then knowing what you were dealing with and what you were going to be up, you know, that uphill climb at this event still does not come through for these Mad Lions. And when you look at those numbers, man, that is a, that is not, not a pretty look when you're t talking about that as your final stat line for Worlds. I promise that's that's it for the flame for MDK. We'll, we'll, we'll leave them alone now. Let them go into the offseason in peace because still they made it further than 100 Thieves. So got to feel better about that, right? Yeah, they do get that little slight silver lining towards how things went. And at the end of the day, again, even with criticism, even with harping on some of these things, you have to understand that ourselves, a lot of the fans, everybody wants to just see them succeed, wants to see improvement happen and things change that is where a lot of these frustrations and, and and voicing them at this type of point comes through breaks over going forward dk versus tes hanwa life fly quest on thursday we're back in the swing of things mark yes give me those games we're ready for them this is rare again a little bit of a teaser a little bit of a sampling of it on the weekend that just passed through where we did have these elimination style games all the time, baby. We're stepping into that one for these ones, setting up some big time drama for the weekend. These matches, juicy. Get ready for them, folks. Every single matchup. Can't wait to see them. Either elimination or advancement on the line. But that is it today for League Unlock. Yark and Mark here with you, beautiful people. Thanks for hanging out and supporting. As always, we'll catch you on that flip before.